good evening everyone the class for today is oct imaging i'll be talking about oct in central serous chorioretinopathy i am bhuvaneshwari the moderator for the class is dr jsn central serous chorioretinopathy it is characterized by localized neurosensory detachment with or without focal pigment epithelial detachment and altered rpe it is thought to occur due to hyperpermeable choroidal capillaries in association with retinal pigment dysfunction so it belongs to pachychoroid spectrum and it can be either acute or chronic before going on to oct in cscr we will see the oct nomenclature the international nomenclature for oct it states the following layers as the first hyperreflective layer from inside out it is the in the internal limiting membrane then is a retinal nerve fiber layer the hyperreflective layer is a ganglion cell layer which is followed by the inner plexiform layer then is the inner nuclear layer outer plexiform outer nuclear layer and the hyperreflective layer is the external limiting membrane so at the outer retina there are four hyperreflective layers so they are they can be called as band 1 2 3 and 4 the 2 and 3 are also called as zones so what contributes to these bands are the first one is the external limiting membrane and the second hyperreflective layer is the ellipsoid zone and the third one is the interdigitation zone and the fourth one is the rp brooks complex and the hyperreflective area between band 1 and 2 is the myoid zone but the hyperreflective areas between 2 and 3 and 3 and 4 are not accounted for so the revised classification of oct outer retinal bands based on cscr bloom et al said that the entire hypo hyper and hyperreflective bands corresponds to the outer segment interdigitation zone they call these zones as inner osis the central hyperreflective one is the middle osis and the below one is the outer osis so going on to topic proper the features of both acute and chronic cscr overlap with each other so we will see the features occurring layer by layer changes in the choroid cscr belongs to pachychoroid spectrum what is pachychoroid pachy is pachychoroid is derived from the greek word pachy which means thick it is characterized by diffuse or focal increase in the choroidal thickness so it is pachychoroid has dilated halus layers vessels these are called as the pachy vessels and attenuation of the inner choroid that is the chorio capillaries and the sacculus layers and another importance of choroidal thickness is it varies with age location axial length of the eye and the time of the day the choroid becomes thinner with age in a pilot study of edi oct in normal eyes margolis and spade showed that choroidal thickness decreases with age by approximately 15 micrometer with every decade of life there is a significant variability in between individuals of similar age choroidal thickness it varies with the location of the macula the thickest being the central macula and the thinnest in all directions especially nasally choroidal thickness also varies with axial length and refractive error being thinner in the longer and more myopic eyes and it also varies with time of the day thicker in the morning and thinner in the evening going on to the changes in the rp first thing is pigment epithelial detachment pd is in cscr is usually a serous pd it is seen in more than 50% of the cases in one study the st studies show a variability of 55 to even 100 percentage presence of pd in cases of cscr it is more common in chronic cases and it can be present inside the srf or outside the srf and it usually co localizes with the areas of thickened choroid and in active cases pd can be present at the leakage site micro rips micro rips are visualized in around 12 percentage of the cases the causes for these rips are the increased choroidal hydrostatic pressure can lead on to elevation of the rpe causing pd with further increase in the choroidal pressure the rpe gives way giving rise to the rpe rips otherwise called as micro rips these are the points of leakage in ffa 
and other rp alteration seen in chronic csr include rp atrophy rp hypertrophy or thickening skip lesions or rp aggregations going on to the changes in the neurosensory layer the serous retinal detachment it is one of the pathognomonic characteristics seen in acute csr the morphology of the retinal layers remains unchanged except for elongation of the photoreceptor outer segment what is elongation of the photoreceptor outer segment so it is usually in minimal in acute cases there is minimal elongation whereas in chronic cases what happens is the photoreceptors remains detached from the rpe for a longer period of time so the, thereby resulting in inadequate phagocytosis of their outer segment resulting in the elongation of the photoreceptor outer segment sometimes they are called as shaggy photoreceptors a persistent thick outer segment may progress to the presence of a permanent subretinal deposit which has a very poor visual prognosis hyperreflective dots hyperreflective dots are deposits are the hyperreflective spots which can be seen in intraretinal subretinal or in the choroidal area the origin may vary subretinal it is said that it is due to macrophages and microglia which engulf the elongated photoreceptors or it can be because of protein like compounds fibrins or lipids the subretinal hrds are seen in long standing cases and they suggest a low final visual acuity another sign seen is vacuole sign this is a hyporeflective area amid the hyperreflective fibrin it indicates the site of constant fluid egress and it is an important sign of disease activity if present chronic changes include in chronic csr it can be cystoid macular degeneration outer nuclear layer thinning loss of the ellipsoid zone or complete uh, decrease in the foveal thickness and very rarely a type 1 cnvm can be seen going on to a cases case 1 a 54 year old female came with history of decrease in vision in the right eye for 15 days she has history of loss of vision in the left eye 15 years back diagnosed as a case of optic neuropathy and for which she received oral steroids 15 years prior there was no system history of systemic illness or any reason steroid intake her on examination her best corrected visual acuity is right eye 6 by 18 left eye is a no pli anterior segment showed early lens changes on fundus examination the right eye disc and vessels appear normal there is presence of subretinal fluid srf at the level of the macula left eye show a pale disc with minimal attenuation of vessels oct of the right eye showed a serous macular detachment with maintenance of the neurosensory layers minimal elongation of the photoreceptor outer segments intraretinal hyperreflective dots and subretinal hyperreflective dots are seen and the choroid shows the presence of pachycoroid with dilated the choroid showed the presence of pachycoroid morphology with a subfoveal choroidal thickness of around 462 microns the other eye showed foveal uh, thinning of the fovea going on to a second case uh, he is a 36 year old male came with history of decrease in vision in the left eye for one month he was diagnosed elsewhere as exudative rd and started on oral steroid which the patient took for one month he had similar complaints in the right eye seven months back which was a self limiting episode he which he said that there was visual improvement after 3 months his best corrected visual on examination his best corrected visual acuity was the right eye 6 by 18 and 12 left eye 3 by 60 and 36 anterior segment was within normal limits fundus examination the right eye showed a normal disc and the vasculature with a dull fr and in the left eye showed presence of srf at the macula and along the superior vasculature autofluorescence image showed the presence of rp tracts in both the eyes what is a waterfall sign by autofluorescence so this tracking of fluid it creates an impression of waterfall especially seen in the right eye it's just named the same rp tracts just it's named actually the rp tracts in the right eye are seen clinically also oct right eye showed presence of minimal subretinal fluid with multiple hyperreflective areas which can be due to fibrin deposits elongated photoreceptor outer segments or hyperreflective dots are seen in the intraretinal and in the subretinal area 
there is minimal ellipsoid zone defect and in the choroid shows the presence of pachychoroid with a choroidal thickness of 557 microns. Bhuneshwari, just one question. Below that, yes, OD. Yes, ma'am. What is that? Uh, presence of... Uh, what is e that? Just below the letters OD. Yes. What is that? Can you describe that OCT picture there? ILM wrinkling, ma'am. Okay. Uh, can be due to the presence of ERM. ERM. Just wrinkling of the ILM. Then there are a lot of other features in that small corner. Presence of uh, subretinal flu fluid. Subretinal fluid. Uh, what are those periphery. vertical lines? There are two, three vertical lines. What are they? There's some on the left side, some on the right side. What are those vertical lines? Anyone? Back. Hmm? Vessel. Back. Yeah, yeah. Those are normal Back. retinal vessels causing shadowing. Back. Left eye showed the presence of subretinal fibrin with small PEDs and flattened PEDs and multiple hyperretinal dots in the intraretinal and the subretinal area and presence of pachychoroid with a choroidal thickness of 574 microns. On FFA of this patient showed multiple leaks for which focal laser was done patient was reviewed after two and a half months. His visual acuity improved to 6 by 7.5 in the right eye and 6 by 18 in the left eye. Both eye showed the resolution of the subretinal fluid and fibrin. In the left eye, there is some amount of minimal fibrin still present and hyperreflective areas. Presence of fibrin in the left eye. Going on to the third case, it's a 46-year-old female who came with history of decrease in vision in the left eye for eight months. She had a similar complaint in the left eye five years ago where she was diagnosed elsewhere as left eye central serous chorioretinopathy, which was a self-limiting episode. She said that after five months, the vision improved by itself. And after that, there were no complaints. She's a recently detected hypertensive of one month, and there was no history of any steroid or any other drug intake. On examination, the best corrected visual acuity in the right eye was 6'6", left eye was 6 by 60, and the anterior segment was within normal limits. On fundus examination, the fundus showed the presence of multiple hard exudates around the macula with subretinal fluid and presence of a hemorrhagic area in the macula. On autofluorescence, showed the presence of RP atrophic tracts. This is the OCT imaging of the left eye. It showed the presence of neurosensory layer detachment with subretinal fluid and fibrinoid deposits. There is a pigment epithelial detachment with an hyperreflective area, which can be suggestive of a fibrovascular growth. And there is presence of pachychoroid with dilated Hallas layers vessel and the choroidal thickness is 430 microns. So on imaging, OCTA showed the presence of abnormal vascular network, and ICGA also showed the presence of abnormal vascular network, thereby confirming the diagnosis of a CNVM in a previously diagnosed case of CSCR. For this patient, intravitreal anti was given, and the patient is yet to follow up. Going on to the fourth case, it's a 61-year-old male, came with complaints of decrease in vision in both eyes for one year. History of steroid usage in the form of nasal spray for asthma for 10 years. On examination, his best corrected visual acuity was 3 by 60 in both eyes, and anterior segment examination showed early lens changes. This is the fundus image showing the presence of multiple RP alteration and atrophic patches at the level of the macula. OCT image showed in the right eye a cystoid macular edema with diffuse chitic cavities and loss of ellipsoid zone, irregular RPE and RPE atrophy. Left eye showed foveal thinning with loss of ellipsoid zone, irregularity of the RPEs and a few flattened PEDs. All these indicate a case of a chronic CSCR. So going on to the differential diagnosis, there are a number of differential diagnoses for CSCR. I'm just going to concentrate on 
the OCT differentials for CACR and how to differentiate them. First thing is Okoenagi Harada syndrome or VKH. The OCT differentiating features are VKH shows the presence of the following fluctuation of the ILM, presence of subretinal septa, folds of RP. So there is fluctuation of the ILM, presence of subretinal septa, RP folds, RP undulations. These are more common in VKH. There is something called basilary layer detachment, which is the detachment occurring at the level of the myoid zone. Though it can be seen in CSCR, it is more common in VKH. My next differential is an optic disc pit. So the differentiating feature are optic disc pit can also present with the presence of SRF with inner and outer layer retinoschisis. The most important thing is we can see uh, there is presence of SRF with inner and outer retinal schisis but there is a communication between the pit and the srf which clinches the diagnosis of optic disc pit next differential is a polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy so the peds and polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy they're usually sharp peaked ped or acute angle ped or it can be a complex or a multilobular notched ped and presence of double layer sign though seen in csr it's more common in PCV and sub RP ring like structure can be seen in polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. So, here is the hemorrhagic PED. Though the pachychoroid is present in both CSCR and IPCV, we can differentiate it mainly by an OCTA or ICG, which showed the presence of abnormal branching vascular network. So, the newer OCT biomarkers in CSCR is choroidal vascularity index. It is the ratio of the vascular area to the total choroidal area. So they say that the eyes with active CSCR have a higher CVI as compared to the resolved CSCR and the use of choroidal vascularity index and the exact effect on CSCR is yet to be ascertained. So this is an image from an article and it's a nice uh, teaching image so which, sh uh, which shares the uh, like six cases which present with neurosensory detachment, uh, ex excluding diseases like BEST. So just I thought uh, to um, summarize, this would be a good idea. So, so we are going through these six uh, images quickly, as in what are the uh, quick differential. So first is a CSCR with fibrin. So here we see a serous detachment with fibrin along with vacuole sign. But the RP mostly looks intact. As such, there is no disruption. And generally, we see we do see micro ribs. But unlike a CNVM, uh, the most of the RP is most of a PED with the micro rib rather than an RP disruption. The second case, yeah, the second image is a unilateral acute idiopathic maculopathy, quite rare. But uh, it is characterized by we can see in the left eye fundus in the infos image there are uh, hemorrhages along with the pocket of hyperreflective fluid with hyperreflective dots within the neurosensory detachment. The third one is the acute syphilitic posterior placoid chorioretinitis, again a bit rare. So here it reveals uh, hyperreflective dots most importantly in the vitreous phase also. We can see over the ILM. So here, so there are hyperreflective dots which is suggestive of inflammation. Along with uh, there is hyperreflective material within the neurosensory detachment and granular hyperreflective dots within and below it. So this is a case of acute uh, syphilitic posterior placoid chorioretinitis. And uh, next is uh, idiopathic choroidal neovascularization. Unlike CSCR, mostly this is associated with uh, uh, choroidal thinning other than the aneurysmal type 1, uh, that is IPCV. And uh, it is associated with RPE disruption along with the uh, subretinal fluid and mostly intraretinal cyst also. And the next case, uh, as you already mentioned, is a uh, Koenagi Harada disease, which shows classically the several septa within the exudative elevation with the undulating RPE. And again, we can see there are cells in the vitreous, which is uh, nicely seen. And the next is uh, again very rare, tubercular posterior viatus presenting with the granuloma. We can see the hyperreflective granuloma causing complete shadowing behind along with the uh, intraretinal cyst. So, thank you.